Hi, hello everybody. Welcome back to another session of one question a day in tooth morphology. We have the question to be discussed today as the mandibular second premolar morphology. So for this tooth, we begin with the classic introduction of the tooth, the function of the tooth, the tearing and the grinding of food develops from four or five lobes. Traditionally, this tooth has a three cusp pipe or a two cusp pipe. In the three cusp pipe, we have three buccal lobes and two lingual lobes. And in the four lobes, we have three buccal lobes and one lingual lobe, the classic two cusp pipe and three type cusp pipe. So this is one important. So we have four lobes or five lobes. And that is in the two cusp or the three cusp pipe. Right from the start, you say about the cusp pipe. So we have, as usual, the chronology being described, okay, dimensions being said. All these are classic uh, wheeler dimensions, wheelers from the textbook. Next, we're going to describe the tooth, the buccal aspect. The buccal aspect, approximately the crown is trapezoidal in shape with a short side cervically and a long occlusal side. Okay, shorter cervical and longer occlusal. The occlusal table is taking the prominent shape. The mesial outline is slightly concave till the mesial contact area, somewhere in the middle of the middle, uh, sorry, middle to uh, cervical third area. The mesial slope is shorter than the distal slope. The buccal cusp tip is not as sharp as the other premolars, but not too blunt also, right? And is mesial to the midline. It is mesial to the midline. From the lingual aspect, there may be one or two lingual cusps, as the case may be two or th uh, three cusp type. In the three cusp type, you will find two lingual cusps. The lingual cusp is shorter than the buccal cusp, hence the outline of the buccal cusp is seen. Okay. In case of the three cusp type, the mesial cusp is larger than the mesiolingual cusp is larger than the distolingual cusp. They are separated by a lingual developmental groove. The cervical line is slightly convex or even straight. From the mesial aspect, the tooth is rhomboidal in shape, wider buccolingually than mesiodistally. The buc it is, that is seen wider buccolingual. The buccal cusp is just buccal to the apex, root apex is buccal. It is not, it's outside. The lingual cusps are well developed. The mesial margin is straight and perpendicular to the long axis. The mesial marginal ridge is straight and perpendicular to the long axis of the tooth. And this gives a reinforcement pillar beam effect. There is no mesiolingual developmental groove and maximum convexity of the lingual outline is in the occlusal third. Maximum convexity is in the occlusal third. Distal aspect is more or less a mirror image of the uh, mesial aspect and it is present, but the distal margin is present more cervically. The tips of both the lingual cusps are seen if it is a three cusp type. If there is two cusp type, then there is a distal lingual developmental depression seen here, somewhere here. A cluxal cusp, we have to have, say, a yes, three or two cusp type. The best would be to start with this uh, diagram. Y pattern or the three cusp pattern, U pattern or the H pattern in the two cusp patterns. Here you have three cusp patterns, the cusp of the mesiolingual cusp, distolingual cusp and the buccal cusp. One buccal cusp and two lingual cusps. In the U and H pattern, we have a buccal and a lingual cusp. With this minimum background, you go into the describing the three cusp and the two cusp pattern. The three cusp pattern is said to be traditionally a Y-shaped pattern. Okay. And the out, out, geometrical outline of this cusp pipe is more or less square and it is lingual. The Y is lingual to the buccal line angles. Okay. The cusp vary in height and size from the smallest following. The buccal is the biggest size, followed by mesiolingual and the distolingual. According to size, the biggest is the buccal, then mesiolingual, then distolingual. Okay. Each cusp exhibits four cusp ridges and four inclined planes, and they are named according to their uh, 
posterior like other posterior teeth then i named according to their place the buccal cusp have four inclined planes while the lingual cusp possesses two functional inclined planes there is no transverse ridge on the white type second premolar all the all other premolars have a transverse ridge running from the buccal to the lingual uh lingual cusp but in three cusp type there is no transverse ridge the number of fossa are two the mesial and distal fossa we have a central uh, pit okay a mesial pit central pit and distal the central groove mesio triangular groove mesio buccal triangular groove mesial marginal groove followed by mesial and distal marginal ridge mesial pit distal pit and central pit so the two cusp type they have hat shape and u shape here the geometry outline is round whereas that in here it was square and there is a lingual convergence from the lingual side it is converging there is one buccal and one lingual cusp and there would be a transverse ridge the central developmental groove may be h or u in this cusp the buccal cusp is large and a smaller lingual cusp okay and u type it is more distinct whereas the lingual cusp of h type is larger and sharper than the u type but there is a minor difference between the cusp in the h and u type fossa the two cusp type also has two fossa mesial and distal fossa the pit and grooves in the u has central mesial and distal the pits and groove in h type is the central groove main all others or the other things will be supplementary grooves uh with that then you have to talk about the contact points and embrasures the pulp we have discussed about the pulp outline earlier first itself this is the supplement to the mandibular second premolar a very important tooth as we said from the buccal aspect we are not going to discuss the two cusp or three cusp pattern or the occlusal patterns we are only going to discuss the uh, buccal palate uh, lingual mesial distal we have the buccal surface mandibular second premolar okay single cusp seen we have the mesial and distal outline single cusp prominent seen how does it go we have the cervical line that is nearly flat and along the mesial outline it goes to the as a convex area slightly convex area till the junction of the occlusal and the middle third where there is a broad contact area after which it forms a long mesial straight long mesial slope then a short distal slope this junction of mesial and short slope is your the cusp tip and in newly erupted tooth this this area the slopes might be slightly concave whereas after the into occlusal pattern this may be worn out so we have a long mesial slope and a short distal slope after which it turns into a smooth convex area where there in in the there is a contact point the contact area then it is a uniformly convex area to form the or meet the cervical line the center is well formed buccal ridge that divides the buccal surface into two developmental depressions distal developmental depression and mesial developmental depression like your mandibular first premolar so the prominent buccal ridge is there the roots a single root is seen the straight outline till the middle third after which there is a constriction and gradually tapers whereas the mesial is straight outline the distal is mildly concave till the junction of the uh, middle and apical third wherein it becomes straight tapering that is the buccal surface for you for the mandibular second premolar the distal surface shows the, in the three cusp pattern we are discussing only the three cusp pattern if it is a two cusp pattern prominent lingual ridge like your mandibular uh, sorry maxillary uh, first or second premolars okay we have the mesial and distal south line the cervical acid uh, other premolar it is nearly flat we have a two cusp seen mesio lingual cusp and distal lingual cusp the mesio lingual cusp is the broadest one and biggest one whereas the distal lingual is the smallest one we find a lingual groove separating these two cusps we have a prominent big buccal cusp that is visible 
in case of three cuspal pattern or two cuspal pattern both the cuspal patterns the lingual cusp is not that well developed if it is a three cusp pattern we have the prominent lingual groove separating the mesiolingual broad big cusp and the distolingual cusp as usual in the mesial outline of the crow uh, root it is straight outline till the epical third after which it slowly tapers down whereas the distal outline is a mild concave till the epical third and the arid uniformly tapers the mesial of surface of the mandibular second premolar we have two cusp c one is a well developed lingual cusp the other is the highly placed buccal cusp and like your first premolar uh, this is well developed lingual cusp is well developed the buccal outline is uniformly uh, convex uniformly convex from the cervical uh, sorry cervical line to the tip of the cusp you find the uh, buccal surface to be uniformly uh, convex with the crest of curvature at the middle the center shows a broad contact area slightly lingual and there is a developmental depression and the most striking feature is the lingual tilt of the crown it is tilted widely you can see the tilt such that the tip of the buccal cusp tips falls within nearly the root apex nearly the root apex so that is the lingual tilt lingual well developed lingual cusp the entire lingual outline is convex and a flat nearly flat cervical line the buccal outline of the root single root is straight from the cervical line to the periapical region whereas for the lingual slide it is slightly concave that is the mesial and the distal is essentially the same of the mesial except for the fact that the distal marginal ridge is slightly lowerly placed so that the buccal surface is visible or the mesial surface is entirely visible because the distal marginal is lowerly placed than the mesial marginal ridge so you can see the mesial triangular groove and all other stuffs of the occlusal area about four lobes three buccal one lingual in two cusp types five lobes three buccal and two lingual in the three cusp types then you talk about the uh, embrasures and contact point and with that you come to an end on the mandibular second premolar okay stay connected with this channel for an interesting questions and learning incrementally stay connected with this